Ever notice how often we hear the word narcissist these days? Someone cuts you off in traffic, a coworker takes credit for your idea, instantly they're a narcissist. But what do we really mean when we say that? We're taking a deep dive today into The Narcissist. You know, a book that goes beyond those little annoyances to explore what makes someone extremely narcissistic. It has become a bit of a buzzword, you're right. But this book, it makes a really important distinction, not just someone with, you know, kind of high self-esteem, but what it calls extreme narcissists. It talks about the clinical side, NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, but then also how even without a diagnosis, some of these narcissistic traits can be so damaging. So it's less about slapping a label on someone and more about really understanding that spectrum of behavior. Yeah, yeah. Like, think of it as a continuum. It's not just a yes or no, right? It's everyone's got some degree of narcissism. It's about where you fall on that line. On one end, maybe, healthy self-confidence. On the other, you've got someone like Sam. He's actually a character in the book. CEO, from the outside, seems to have it all. But totally incapable of empathy, needs constant praise, and will walk all over anyone to get what he wants. Textbook NPD. Okay, yeah, I see the difference there. But what would make someone end up on that far end of the spectrum? Is it as simple as just like being really, really self-absorbed? Oh, it's way more complicated. And that's what I find so fascinating about this book. It argues that extreme narcissism, it's really driven by insecurity and shame deep down. Hold on, really? Because that seems like the opposite yeah. of what we see. These are the people who often project so much confidence, even arrogance. Right, and that's the thing about shame. It's so painful that extreme narcissists, they build these elaborate defenses to avoid feeling it at all costs. That outward confidence, a lot of times it's a facade, a way to hide their vulnerability, to cover it up. It's like So instead of truly feeling superior, they're actually just trying to hide how insecure they really are. Exactly. And because that fear of being exposed is so strong, even small things that go wrong can be really triggering. The book talks about narcissistic injury. We've all felt that sting of shame sometimes, but for extreme narcissists, it's like a punch in the gut. So what does that actually look like, like in everyday life? Let's say you've got someone like uh, Natalie, she's having one of those days, oversleeps, hits traffic, gets a tougher than usual performance review at work, then has a date cancel at the last minute. For most of us, it's just a bad day. It happens, right? Yeah. We move on. But for someone like Natalie, those small setbacks, they feel like huge blows to the ego. It's because their sense of self-worth is already so shaky. They're on high alert for anything that might confirm that fear, that they're not good enough. Those everyday things, they become this huge deal, like proof of their flaws. And so then comes the defensiveness. Exactly. Instead of just feeling down about a bad day, Natalie goes on the defense, blames traffic when she knows she hit snooze a few too many times. She gets argumentative in her performance review instead of listening. And when the date cancels, forget it. All men are jerks, no other possibility. So it's like all that shame they're trying to bury has to go somewhere. So it comes out as blaming others, anger, putting other people down. It's a way to offload those feelings. The book calls it um, finding a shame carrier. They need someone else to take the hit for how they're feeling. Which is kind of a lot to think about. It's not even just being self-centered. It's like other people become characters in their own little drama. Yeah, and that need for a shame carrier, it can show up in really destructive ways, one of them being bullying. But before we go there, let's talk about a few more of those defense mechanisms. Because knowing what to look for is so important for protecting yourself. So we've been talking about how extreme narcissists try to deflect their own shame by pushing it onto others. But how does that actually cross the line into something as serious as, like, bullying? It goes back to that need, that really desperate need to feel superior. Because if they can make someone else feel small, inadequate, unworthy, it sort of, like, props up their own ego, right? It's a way to manage their self-esteem, but it's all external. By controlling other people, putting them down. So they almost need that victim to play a role in their own, like, self-deception. Sadly, yeah, you could say that. Their sense of power depends on someone else feeling powerless. And the really tough part is extreme narcissists, they don't have that capacity for empathy. They can be totally oblivious to the pain they're causing. In their heads, they might even think the victim deserves it somehow. Like, it's their own fault for being weak or whatever. Which is just... It's awful when you think about cases like we talked about before. Rebecca Sedgwick, that young girl who was cyberbullied, and she ended up taking her own life. It's a perfect example of how destructive that need to dominate, to humiliate can be. And it's so disturbing in these situations. Often the bully, they show no remorse. Zero. Because they're so locked into their own need for power, the victim's pain just doesn't even compute. 
It's really chilling. Yeah. But even though it's hard to hear, I think understanding those patterns, that dynamic is important. And like you said before, not to excuse the behavior, but just to be aware of it so you could protect yourself, protect other people. A hundred percent. And the book, it actually gives you some tools to do that. There's this checklist of narcissistic traits, which can be really helpful just to see if any red flags pop up in your own life. Okay, so let's talk about that checklist. Is it about diagnosing other people or more about just like raising your own awareness. No, it's definitely not about playing therapist, not at all. It's more like having a framework, right, to make sense of what you're seeing. I remember how we talked about that spectrum. We all have these tendencies sometimes. It's a combination and how intense it is. That's what matters. So what are some of the big warning signs? What should we be looking out for? A major one, probably the biggest, is a lack of empathy. They're so focused on their own world, their own stuff, they just can't really get what you're feeling, you know? They might even say you're too sensitive if you try to share your feelings or completely shut down if you try to talk about something important to you, but it's not about them. So their needs, their feelings, those always take center stage. Yeah, you get it. And along with that, you'll see they can't take criticism, even the tiniest bit. They might fly off the handle, completely deny it, or twist it around on you for even daring to question them. It's like that story in the book, Lizzie. She thought she was friends with Denise, but the second she started setting boundaries, Denise went ballistic spreading rumors, trying to get her in trouble at work. Total 180. Classic example. And it just shows why it's so important to catch those warning signs early. Not to write people off, but just to protect yourself. Because this kind of behavior, it can really blindside you. This has been such a fascinating deep dive. More than just labeling people, right? It's about understanding what drives this behavior, how it plays out. Yeah. So we can all navigate these relationships in a smarter way. Absolutely. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to something as potentially damaging as extreme narcissism. Couldn't agree more. And for all of you listening, here's something to think about as you go about your day. If at the heart of extreme narcissism, there's this deep well of shame, does that change how we see the people who hurt us? If we understand the why, does that change anything about how their actions make us feel? Just something to ponder. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, and we'll see you next time.